why am I not crazy about the H600? <laughs> oh boy, the guys are gonna, I, I'm gonna hear from the factory. So I'm gonna review a product that has already been reviewed many, many times already, um, the Hegel H600. You can see lots of online reviews and YouTube videos as well. And the reason I'm doing this is because um, shortly, hopefully next week, if not, um, it'll be a week after, we'll be doing a giant high-end integrated uh, amplifier comparison. So this is um, the second one following the AccuFace that I just did. I believe, uh, Allison, you're working on that, right? The AccuFace? Uh, AccuFace, yeah. So she'll be doing that and, and hopefully they'll drop pretty soon. So we'll be doing a whole bunch of different uh, units and then comparing all of them. So the H600. Uh, many of you know Hegel. They've been around a long time. They make uh, very, very good products, very reliable. Their integrated amplifiers also include a lot of features like uh, um, streaming and in, uh, internal DACs and so on and so on. So, uh, and we do very well with it. Uh, they partner incredibly well with the MagnaPans. Their high damping factor works really well in uh, uh, allowing the bass to be tight and yet um, um, controlled and deep and very tuneful. Uh, they also work very well with uh, regular speakers as well. The H600 is their top of the line integrated, came out a few months ago, rated uh, 303 watts per channel to 8 ohms. I couldn't find specifications for 4 ohms and 2 ohms, but the factory says it's stable down to 2 ohms. Damping factor of uh, 4000, which is insane. Uh, dual mono design, I think it shares the power supply, otherwise it's fully dual mono. As I mentioned, it's got an internal DAC, streamer, It'll do AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, Chromecast, MQA, Rune. It can also do uh, home theater bypass. So if you've got home theater processors or receivers and you want to connect it through the uh, Eagle H600, you can easily do that. Digital inputs include BNC, coax, all, anyway. You can, you can read the other, or you can watch other videos and get all the stuff. I'm just gonna talk about um, stuff that matters to me and many of my clients. So, in terms of the system, I use um, both the internal streamer as well as the internal DAC, as well ex as uh, a Lumen P1 as an external streamer. I wanted to compare. I also use the MSB discrete DAC to compare it with the internal DAC. Um, I use two pairs of speakers, the Wilson Sasha V2, which is over here, as well as the uh, Sonus Faber Serafinos. Uh, they're both well. The Serafino is about what twenty-five thousand US or twenty thousand US, and the uh, Sashas are more than that. About I don't know forty-four, forty-five. I I can't remember numbers offhand, but uh, that's those are the speakers I use. In the um, re review, I'm going to talk about. Uh, not only did I do all of those comparisons I just mentioned, I also listened to two other integrated amplifiers to sort of give me an idea of how it sounded in comparison, and it'll ex uh, it will become evident why I started to do that. Um, okay, let's start with, as I, usually, as I say, it's, it's good, bad, and ugly, but in this case, there are a couple of outstanding um, feature, uh, uh, performance areas, so, uh, so this has some outstanding ones. Number one, it is certainly one of the quietest, uh, blackest background units I've ever heard. The first thing you'll notice, as soon as you, pl you turn it on and music starts playing, you will notice right away that instruments seem to sort of appear from a completely black background. Again, don't know how to describe it. If you've never heard the Hegel before, um, you won't understand. But if you hear the Hegel and then you hear it to something compared to something else, that becomes extremely evident. It's as if uh, the performers are on the stage and only spotlights are on the performers uh, and the instruments. Everything else is pitch black. That's what it sounds like to me. It's just a very, very dark background. And if you put your ear right against the speaker, you hear virtually nothing. Uh, so that's, um, those are the two outstanding uh, characteristics I uh, heard instantly. Good, so let's talk about some of the features first. I like their 
binding posts. It's nice, chunky ones, but they're not round. They, they, they're they rounded on one side, uh, uh, top and bottom, if you will, and then on the side, they're flat. So you can put your finger on the flat side and you can give it a nice torque and your fingers won't slide and you don't have to use tools. So that's good, I like that. Um, it, it, it'll connect uh, bare wire spades as well as bananas. It has lots of inputs. Uh, I started to go through all the inputs and I thought, forget it. Uh, you know, two pairs of uh, XLR inputs, uh, RCAs, uh, lots of um, digital inputs and so on. So more than enough for most people, I would say. Uh, appears to be well made. Our, our experience with Hegel so far has been extremely good. There's only been, I think, one that I can remember that had an issue. And then certainly uh, uh, before we became a Hegel uh, dealer, some clients uh, contacted us recently. They bought this stuff uh, many, many years ago and required a bit of service. They brought it in, but we're talking about very, very few uh, to my memory. As I said, lots of features. Yes, essentially, you just have to hook up a pair of speakers and away you go. So uh, very, very good that way. Okay, let's talk about the sound in terms of good. Very competent in almost every category I can think of. I mean, as, as audiophiles, you can go through them and I'll tell you they're very, very competent. Certainly as good as almost anything that you can think of. Soundstage, bass, highs, uh, imaging. Uh, um, there are some, some spectacular, as I mentioned before, really dark backgrounds. Um, there's really nothing to complain. There's nothing that it doesn't do well in virtually all of these categories. Um, uh, I'll go into some detail. The bass is amazing, very powerful, very controlled, articulate. Um, in this room, for example, hooked up with the Sashas or the Serafinos, the, the bass will shake the walls, the floors, the ceilings. Uh, it's, it's extremely powerful and, and with tons of power to spare. No issues whatsoever. And very clear. You can hear the different notes in the bass very, very easily. Uh, Mid-range, we'll get back to this later. High frequencies, smooth, extended, no harshness unless it's in the recording. It does not exaggerate sibilance. Uh, it's airy, but not extremely so. I, I don't find it necessarily the most airy integrated amp I've ever heard, but it's certainly not uh, terrible by any means. It's certainly near the top. Uh, it, it sort of sounds like a really good silk dome tweeter. Um, soundstage, nice and wide. Um, and when I used the P1, soundstage got even wider. Uh, so that's a testament to the uh, streamer that's built in already. It's very, very good. Um, speakers completely disappear. There's no sense at all uh, about the speakers unless <coughs> you're playing recordings that um, are recorded so that the sound is coming out of the speakers. Um, very good layering. Uh, image is very precise, very stable. Very good separation between the instruments uh, and, the, and the image, as I said before. It's as if everything has spotlight on it, so you can hear a, a, a sense of an image with its own space within the sound stage very, uh, very easily. Dynamics, wow. It's, I almost put dynamics in terms of the spectacular category because both the micro and the macro are amazing. Very, very dynamic, very, very uh, uh, capable between the extremes, between uh, loud and soft, as well as all the nuances in between. Very good leading edge with the musical instruments and the voices. You can hear the, the, the inflections uh, very, very easily. Um, so, what's not to like? Well, let's keep going. Uh, starting with bad, uh, in terms of the physical stuff. There's still no markings on the unit as far as what the model is. Now, long-term viewers know this is a bugaboo for me. At home is no issue. You know what you bought. It's no problem whatsoever. In the store, however, when you have a bunch of Hegels, um, uh, they all essentially look the same. Now, of course, in this case, this is their biggest one. So if you put it there, you'll know that that is the 600. But sometimes, if somebody comes in and wants to hear, for example, the H95 and the H120, they basically look the same, and, and there's no easy way to tell. You have to turn it around, look in tiny little script on the little sticker that's their serial number, and it'll tell you what it is. It's, and, you know, I'm a blind old guy. It's hard to see these things. So, you know, it would be nice if just on the front somewhere, they just put the little script that says H whatever it is. So, uh, remote control, 
beautifully made, but it sucks. I don't like the fact that all the buttons are all round and uh, they're all basically equally spaced. Um, better remotes will have different shapes, so you can tell intuitively as you're touching the remote what buttons you're touching. Not crazy about the remote. Um, another bad, in a sense, there's a lot of competition at this price range. It's 15,000 Canadian. I don't know what it is in the States. Uh, at $15,000, you've got the Macintosh MA9500. You've got the Macintosh MA12000, which is a bit more money. You've got the uh, AccuFace E4000, which is also $15,000. You've got the AccuFace E5000, which is $20,000. Uh, you've got the Daniel Hertz Maria 350, which is about 17 and change. There's a lot, and that's just within the store. And then, of course, there's all the other products that are out there uh, that I haven't mentioned. So there's a lot of competition. So is that a bad? Maybe. If it performs as well as it does, then it's not a bad. The price, of course, is bad. 15000 is a lot of money. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, among the good points, it has firmware up, uh, upgradability. Uh, that's wonderful. It means that anytime the factory has some updates, uh, as long as the unit is connected, it will automatically download it and you've got the latest firmware. All right, so, uh, oh, one more bad. Resale value is historically about average. That's not bad necessarily, it's just not great, uh, um, uh, which is a shame because Hegel, for the most part, is an incredible product. Um, okay. So, why am I not crazy about the H600? <laughs> oh boy, the guys are gonna, I, I'm gonna hear from the factory. I wanna preface this by saying that what I'm about to say are strictly my own observations. I have no idea what Mike and Lewis and the other people uh, think of. I don't know what Stefan thinks. I have no idea. Uh, I did all this on my own. These are my uh, observations. Um, also, it's entirely my taste. Your taste and my taste may be completely different. You may think I'm an idiot, you may think I'm uh, deaf, and that's okay. Uh, uh, we all cannot, and thank God, like the same thing. If we did, you know, I'd be sleeping in your bed uh, with your wife, I would have your kids, we would all go to the same restaurants, we would all eat the same food, you would dress like me, God forbid. Um, it's it's Thank God the world is big enough so that we can all have our own uh, likes and dislikes. So uh, I respect what you will prefer. These are my preferences. Um, number one, I don't find the harmonics to be as good as other integrated amplifiers. And what do I mean by that? Um, as I mentioned earlier, I also compared the H600 to a couple of other integrated amplifiers. Now the reason I did that, I wasn't planning to. My idea was a little bit later I would get together a bunch of the integrated amplifiers and then do a whole big comparison. But because as I was listening, I realized that as competent, in fact, as, as incredible in some areas the H600 uh, H is, uh, I quickly realized that there were certain things I wasn't hearing and I'm playing music that I'm extremely uh, uh, knowledgeable uh, about and fond of. Um, on tracks, for example, with guitar, I was doubting whether the strings were nylon or steel, which is never an issue for me. Um, should be very, very clear. The only time I could clearly uh, 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 be sure was when the fingers were sliding over the fret, over the strings, and then you could hear, but if they were plucking, it wasn't all that clear. Um, uh, I'll give you a specific example uh, with piano. Uh, Martha uh, Agarich, I believe that's how you, you pronounce her name, um, playing Bach's um, uh, Toccata in C minor. It's one of my favorite pieces of music. Um, a lot of recordings, a lot of um, pianists uh, play this piece with uh, early period uh, uh, instruments. And so I came across this piece um, recently and started to become, um, uh, fall in love with her 
presentation, the way she plays. So when I played it uh, through the Hegel, the first thing I noticed was this sounds very light. It sounds like a period instrument, which I didn't notice before. So at first I thought, oh, maybe it's the resolution of the Hegel that's telling me that the instrument is a period instrument. But then I thought, I've heard this now for about a month, and it's never occurred to me that that's the case. And I've played it on many really good systems. So then I started Googling, and turns out that she's not playing a period instrument. She's playing a nine-foot concert grand. And I thought, now that's weird, because what I hear is a lighter, uh, not, not as full-bodied, not as powerful sounding instrument. So that's when I thought, let me hook up another integrated amplifier. I won't mention the name at the moment. It's just a tease so you will watch our next few videos. And sure enough, even cold, instantly, you could hear the piano was full-bodied, rich, um, powerful, the harmonics were stronger. It just sounded more like a piano as opposed to, uh, I don't know, like, like a period instrument. And I thought, okay, well, maybe it's this particular integrated amp. Let me try another integrated amp. Now, both are solid state, right? Uh, all three, I should say, are all solid states. So I tried the third one. Sure enough, same thing. Rich, full-bodied, very nice harmonics compared to the Hegel, which sounded dry and light. So that's one thing that I noticed uh, as well. I also found that certain acoustic music left me slightly less involved. Um, what do I mean? Um, a, a, a piece of music that I've been playing a lot recently uh, is uh, the Beatles, um, uh, uh, Paul McCartney in particular, playing um, um, anthology uh, on the album Anthology, Mother Nature's Son. And he's uh, recorded on the, on, on the right, the guitar's on the left. Turns out that he's playing, he's singing and playing the guitar. I didn't know that. I thought it was uh, John Lennon playing the guitar. But as I read into it, it turns out that it's, it's only Paul McCartney. And this was during very troubled times for the, uh, for, uh, for the Beatles. And so uh, the, the other members were off doing other things, and it was just Paul who recorded this. Um, anyway, on another integrated amplifier, I would listen to it and I would cry. And it doesn't matter how many times I would, I would listen and I would tear up because it's, it's magical. It's, it's Paul in my room or I'm there and suddenly I'm transported back to the late 60s and I'm witnessing magic being captured and made. On the Hegel, I can he clearly hear beautiful guitar picking, beautiful playing, uh, beautiful voice, the environment, but I wasn't quite as involved. Now again, I want to say this is not like cold and sterile. I'm comparing it to this other integrated amplifier. Um, so that's something that I noticed um, as a, a s slight bad, I should say. Um, those are the two things, harmonics, basically, and slightly uninvolved with certain acoustic music. I just gave you one example. I played a bunch. Any uglies? Not really, unless you consider what I just mentioned ugly. And I actually quite honestly thought about it, and I thought, should I, in fact, put it under the ugly uh, category? I decided no, because it's not um, so severe. There are some products that I've had experience with in the past where it's sterile and boring, technically perfect, but just totally uninvolving. This is not it. Um, and also, it may depend on you. You may be completely different than I. I just personally found that. So, uh, I, I, and but it, so when it came to ugly, I really couldn't come across or couldn't, couldn't think of anything that was ugly. So, what's my conclusion? If you, uh, first of all, you have to listen to it and then see if you like what you like. And if you do, uh, then good for you. I, I'm truly happy for you. Um, for me, with certain types of music, 
show pieces. So audio file show pieces, amazing. You sit down and you play uh, Kashmir by Marsin. You know, uh, your friends are over and you want to astound them, this will astound them. You play any of the old Telok recordings that uh, have trains going by and cows mooing. I'm not joking, by the way. They actually had albums like that. It'll do all of that. Uh, you can play big, bassy recordings, contemporary R&B, um, Beyonce. It'll do all of that. Dance music, incredibly well because it's very dynamic, very articulate. Bass is all there. Do all of that. So that's my conclusion. Um, full featured, well made, extremely powerful, certainly on the surface, very good value for money because it's got all that for $15,000. The other units that I've mentioned that I will be comparing to uh, are variously missing certain other features. By the way, the Hegel, one of the bad, no headphone. Now, I'm not a headphone listener, but lots of our clients are, and it doesn't have a headphone jack. Um, any other p things that I'm missing? Um, no, not really. I think overall, I think for most people, they will absolutely love it. And certainly, uh, there are some wonderful YouTube videos about how good it is, and it's wonderful for their taste. For me, as I said, there were two things that, uh, uh, for me, at $15,000, it's not for me. I, I, if it's my money, I would choose the other ones instead. So anyway, that's my conclusion. I would love, as usual, to, to uh, read your comments. Now, especially if you've heard it, if you've compared it, if you bought it, love to understand why. Um, if you heard it, didn't like it, tell me why. Um, if you haven't heard it and you want to slag Hegel, save it. Don't bother. You know, yes, I know it's made in China. Lots of products are. You know, uh, um, just the reality of today's world. Um, uh, Hegel says that, uh, not defending Hegel, Hegel says that if it wasn't made in China, it would cost more money. Perhaps that's true. I, I, I couldn't tell you because I don't make it. Anyway, please put your comments below. If you like this video, please give it a like as usual. What is it? Uh, share, like, subscribe, all those kinds of things. And speaking of subscribe, um, for uh, just before Christmas, Audio Excellence donated a big amount of money because recently, of course, uh, we've been getting a lot of views with our videos and, and YouTube paid us very generously and I doubled it and I, I uh, gave all the money to Salvation Army. It's a big check and I'm very happy to do so. And that's all because of you guys. You guys make it possible for Audio Excellence to support charities and I'm very grateful for that. And part of the algorithm, as I understand it, is that when you subscribe, YouTube sees that as paying us more money. So please, if you like our videos, uh, please subscribe. Just click on that button somewhere there. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't take much. All right, so uh, we'll see you again next time. Take care, bye-bye.